it's Melissa here. Today I'm going to have an online interview with Vieron de Vorst, who is a lecturer from Belgium. He's planning a project with his students and wants to cooperate with us from Restart Berlin. I will talk with him now about the project and ask him about his ideas. Hello, how are you? Fine, thank you. How are you? Fine, thank you. Today I'm going to talk with you about the project which you are planning, but first of all, could you please introduce yourself? Okay, um, very briefly then, uh, my name is uh, Jeroen de Vest. Um, I'm a lecturer and coordinator of international relations, if you want to, the Erasmus coordinator of the PXL University College, which is of applied sciences, uh, in Hasselt, which is northeastern part of uh, Belgium. Mm -hmm. And you're planning a project with your students and you want to cooperate with us here in Berlin. Please tell us about the project. What is the project going to be about? Uh, the title of the project of our uh, third-year students of journalism is The Cradle of Counter-Movement, Berlin. Uh, the idea is that our students, more or less uh, independently, because they're graduating within seven months, uh, mm -hmm. so it's on, they're on their own to more or less in a city which most of them haven't been or only have been as a tourist. Mm -hmm. city that they don't know that well in a language which perhaps that they don't master that well so they can use english but mm -hmm. some of them have had german in secondary school but not that good how mm -hmm. will they survive how will they struggle actually as a foreign correspondent but because of the covid 19 story we're doing it yes. digitally this year how will they cope with, uh, with with that situation being a foreign correspondent mm -hmm. that's the whole idea okay but how did you come up with this idea um, well, for something like 15 years now, we have the idea that our students uh, focus on hyperlocal media, regional stuff. Uh, Brussels is already a distant city, uh, though they only have to travel one hour <laughs> by train. Uh, so the idea was uh, in the first year we go to Brussels for a project, second year we go abroad, uh, could be Paris, could be whatever, and then and we help them more or less. And then third year, they should be able to independently uh, organize uh, trips to Lisbon, Budapest, uh, London, Berlin. And uh, we've done this, I think, something like 15 times. Oh, and okay. it's, not um, the time. okay. it's, it's not the first time we do it. And it's not the first time we, go, we come to Berlin. And <laughs> Berlin seemed to us, me and my colleagues, uh, because normally we are uh, with four colleagues coming over to Berlin. Um, Unfortunately, not this time, but normally, as well as the professors, as a student, think Berlin is the most interesting place. It's big enough, a lot of things happening, a lot of people do speak uh, English. Uh, and from a political, economic, cultural point of view, it's, it's, it's an interesting city. Is it the reason why you chose Berlin this time for this project? Um, well, it was actually the opposite. We said... Uh, mm -hmm. For a couple of years now, I think this is now the third year in a row we come to Berlin. Uh, we also uh, focused on uh, the, the celebration of the fall of the Berlin Wall uh, mm -hmm. uh, last time. And we had projects about uh, gentrification in Berlin. And I think Berlin once more is a good example. Mm -hmm. You could do the same in other uh, cities, but I think Berlin is always an, an, an appropriate place to, to, to go with students. Uh, that's why I think for a lot of topics, whether it's uh, really politically or not, because mm -hmm. some students uh, definitely are not interested in, in political mm -hmm. stories. But I think you can find stories from all point of view and angles uh, in, in Berlin. And that's why we've chosen again Berlin. And also, of course, because we have a kind of small tradition now of uh, contacts with uh, uh, professors from, uh, from Berlin. Uh, the main topic of the project is counter-movement, you said. What does counter-movement mean to you? Well, to me personally, and I studied modern history and international politics, it has a political angle. It can be, uh, we were there, uh, by the way, when some of the first Pegida movements took place. Uh, we were there uh, when uh, we are the 99% uh, tent camps just in front of the, the, the Bundeskanzler Amt uh, were taking place, uh, etc. So, first of all, it's, it's political counter-movement. There's a long tradition, I guess. Uh, no, no further explanation needed. But I think it's broader. It, it also, uh, the culture and the political and the business part. Uh, from the hippie part, the music scene, uh, uh, the business scene, 
I think I saw the first more or less autonomous driving car in Berlin. Mm -hmm. um, I think more than 10 years ago, there was already uh, a trend, trend of, of giving uh, supermarkets a, a biological and an ecological uh, uh, angle. At that moment in Belgium, uh, nobody did, or it should be yeah. very small. So uh, counter movement can be anything. Mm -hmm. uh, but of course, some of my students, knowing me, think it's only political. But I hope, um, and especially, especially since we're not coming over to Berlin, I hope digitally they will also be uh, possibly to to to, to mentally other non-political counter movements. You mentioned Belgium. How is it in your country? Does it get more or less? Huh. Counter movement is a difficult thing in Belgium because the big counter movement in Belgium for a couple of decades now is the Flemish nationalist political uh, uh, tendency who wants to uh, split up the country and the counter movement is that big that the at the moment uh, as a counter movement are the biggest political movement and want to mm -hmm. dissolve Belgium if they would have a majority in 2024 then that by the way would be the end of Belgium mm -hmm. uh, so Politically, uh, counter-movement is a strange thing in Belgium. Uh, and I think okay. um, if you don't talk about the political part, but about the climate change and, and all other stuff, I think counter-movements are stronger in Berlin than in Belgium. I know Brussels is the capital of European Union and thus... Uh, every day, excuse me, there are demonstrations mm -hmm. in Brussels. Uh, and thus you would think that perhaps for counter-movement you need to go to Brussels and not to Berlin. Mm -hmm. But often these demonstrations are not uh, a demonstration by Belgian people. So it mm -hmm. uh, depends on how you look at it. So Brussels indeed is also a place of uh, counter-movements. Um, we have some German friends living in the Bodensee and they often, when I start talking about Berlin, they say, well, Berlin is not Germany. Then I often have to wow. say, per perhaps say that. <laughs> Bel Belgium and Brussels are also confused. I mean, Brussels is not Belgium. Just like Berlin is not the same as all the cities and towns and villages all yeah. over Germany. So okay. I think that's, that's a comparison you can, uh, yeah. you can make. Mm -hmm. And you have been here in Berlin. Could you also name us a few of the similarities and differences between Berlin and Belgium? We well, heard about the differences a few, but... <laughs> well... I think at first I would think of differences and not about similarities. Uh, it's a strange combination, of course, comparing a big city to a small country. I think there are a lot of um, differences, but let me focus on, on more or less the similarities. I think both are very diverse. I mean, you have the historical East-West division yes. and there's a diverse city, Berlin. Belgium has a more complex situation north-south, including divisions between Flemish and Walloon and Brussels and German-speaking part of Belgium. Um, so very diverse mm. situation. And that's my personal point of view. I think there's kind of common anarchistic background for both places, if I, if I may call them like that, though. They are, of course, in a, in a, in a situation of both being capital, capital of Germany, capital of European Union, uh, confronted with big money, big government bureaucracy. Yet I think there's kind of, and perhaps that's my perception of Berlin, a kind of anarchistic move, movement more than in other German cities. Mm -hmm. And Belgium has that as well, I guess. Even in Belgian media, there's a broad consensus that one of the reasons why Belgium in those two waves of corona has such a high number of, of, of casualties is because, uh, yeah, we have rules, but most people in Belgium don't respect the rules. No, okay, okay. Uh, so I think that's, it's, it's debatable, but that's mm -hmm. one of the, the, the things that we got in common. Uh, I think the gentrification, uh, especially for Brussels, less for Belgium. I think also a kind of um, transit zone, uh, Belgium and Brussels being uh, the place where North and South meet, being the place where the the Germanic part of Europe and the Latin part of Europe meet, and then perhaps Berlin is the same for East and West, where then the German and the Slav or Slavic world more or less meet. So I think they have a lot in common, but of course Berlin has the international attitude. Berlin is 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 in the same category as as New York, etc. And uh, I think if Chinese or Japanese people 
uh, whether the tourists or journalists wanted to visit Europe, they're not going to visit Belgium. I think they're going to visit Berlin. <laughs> Probably, I don't know. But um, back to the project, what do you want to achieve with this project? Well, I hope that our students uh, being uh, at the moment uh, aware of what they have to do, having a deadline within uh, almost two months, uh, mm -hmm. do a lot of research. Yeah. Um, for some, uh, will be definitely necessary because they're not aware of what's happening in Berlin and that German is not that good. But what we want to achieve, of course, is is, is a part of, of, of global cultural awareness, eh? the intercultural aspects of uh, uh, another country with other media, with other rules, with, mm -hmm. with a lot of, of course, similarities, uh, but a lot of differences as well. So make it for them possible to... Uh, by mirroring what they're doing in Belgium mm -hmm. abroad, because we could do the same story here and say we go to Brussels, we stay in Belgium and we have a project about counter movements. Yeah. But that would be too easy because they know no. they know Dutch, they know French, they, they know the media, they know the country. Just leave your comfort zone. But it's not Raqqa, it's not Mosul, mm -hmm. it's Berlin. Yeah. Uh, you don't know a lot about uh, all the details. But the main achievement is more or less uh, made them uh, more world citizens and, and more open to what's what's happening all over the world and, and I know it's of course more difficult to do it in your own language at home. Mm -hmm. Yeah it's very important and I think it's a nice goal to achieve. Thank you a lot for taking your time explaining us about the project. Um, it's a nice theme and I hope that it is going to be possible to work with you and your students in the future. Thank you. The pleasure was mine. <laughs> Thank you. Bye-bye. As Mr. DeVos said in the interview, the main topic of the project is about counter-movement. I think this is a very important and a great theme for a project. I hope it is going to be possible to work with them together in the future. If you like this kind of interview, then please let us know in the comments down below and give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to watch our other videos. See you next time!